Good day guys and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson we'll be taking on the other half of math called trigonometry. So now in this example, um, number two, it says find the values of sine theta, cos theta, tan theta and the reciprocals. So, what all we're given here is a Cartesian plane with a line going to a point over here which is 2 and 3. So, uh, what we have to try and do is construct a triangle. Obviously also you can see we have our theta over here. So let's go ahead and construct this triangle. We can just draw a line down like this. So we have a line coming down here and then our right angle. Right, because we always deal with that right angle. So now we have to use these points over here to help us find the length of some of these sides. So we have the x value of 2 and the y value of 3. So if x value is 2, which means that this point over here is 2, which means that 1 is over here. But what this also means is that from this point over here, which is the origin, because we're working from the origin, up until this point over here, it is 2 units in length. So what we can do is just write that in. So this is 2 units in length. And then on the y-axis, this goes up to 3, which is the height, 3. So which means we can put in that this is 3 units in length going up. But what we don't have is the hypotenuse over here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is solve for the hypotenuse. So if we can remember, it's h squared is equal to the sum of the other sides squared, or the other two sides. So it's going to be 3 squared plus 2 squared. So h squared is going to be equal to 9 plus 4, so h squared is equal to 13. To get h by itself, we have the square root. So you do it to one side, you do the other side. h is equal to the square root of 13. And so we'll just write that in here so we can refer to it. Now what you need to do is find for sine, cos, tan, and the reciprocals. And so we're going to do sine theta first. Sine theta we know is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of hypotenuse, let's go ahead and identify which side is which. We have alpha, I mean theta over here. We have opposite over here, hypotenuse and adjacent. So the opposite side is going to be 3. The hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 13. We'll do cos theta next. We know that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is going to be 2 over the hypotenuse of square root 13 again. Then we do tan theta, which is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 3, adjacent is 2. And that is your answer for sine, cos, and tan. Let's do the reciprocals. We have cosec first, theta, which is 1 over sine theta, which is going to be equal to basically the inverse of that, which is square root of 13 over 3 then we're doing sec theta which is 1 over cos theta which is equal to the inverse of that which is square root of 13 over 2 and then we have cot theta which is equal to 1 over tan theta which is equal to the inverse of 3 over 2 which is 2 over 3 cool so you don't always have to refer to the triangle. If you do have an answer before, obviously if you're just doing the inverse, you just need to switch around the numerator and denominator and you get your answer. Moving on now to the second example we have over here. Um, we get given a Cartesian plane once again, with the angle theta over here, and then a line that goes to the point minus 3 and 4. So once we get to this point, we need to identify the length of the sides. The x value is on the left, y value on the right. So this is going to be 3 units in length at the bottom. But we have to keep that value minus 3 because that's how we need to substitute it in to get our answer, okay? At the end for sine, cos, and tan. So our y is 4. So this is going to be 4 units in length. And once again, we need to use Pythagoras to find the hypotenuse. So we'll go h squared is equal to minus 3 squared plus 4 squared. We'll just put that in brackets. So, <clears throat> three, minus 3 squared is going to give me positive 9 plus 16. That's h squared. h squared is then going to be equal to 25. To get h by itself, we squared it both sides. We get h is equal to 5. So, we'll write that in. Now, we need to do sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That is going to be equal to. So let's go and identify our sides. So 
we have a bit of a situation though. We were given the angle theta over here, which is on the outside. So what we need to do is, wherever we've constructed our triangle, make theta the angle which the outside angle is touching. So if this angle is touching the triangle over here, it's also making this angle on the inside and we'll call this theta. Okay. So what we want to do is now identify, okay, opposite. My opposite is over here. My adjacent is over here and my hypotenuse is over here. So my opposite is 4, my hypotenuse is 5, cos theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, my adjacent is minus 3, so obviously my, if I only have one negative value, my whole fraction is going to be negative, so this is minus 3 over hypotenuse of 5, and then we have 10 theta, which is equal to opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, we're getting opposite, which is 4, and adjacent, which is minus 3. So my whole fraction is basically negative. Now we move on to cosec. Cosec theta is 1 over sine theta. And guys, this gets very repetitive, but the whole point of it being that way is so that you would remember it when you keep doing it over and over again, you'll remember it. Cool? So, 1 over sine theta, we can just flip that around, we get 5 over 4. Sec theta is 1 over cos theta. Once again, we can just flip cos theta over, we get minus 5 over 3. And then cot theta is 1 over tan theta, which we then get as minus 3 over 4. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for our introduction lesson in trigonometry. I hope that this has helped you to understand our foundation work for trigs. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day.